Today's Take 5 with the Saints March the 22nd is James DeCoven, who ultimately became a bishop, but not without some controversy in the 19th century Episcopal Church. James DeCoven, for those of you who prefer rituals, bowing, a high presence or understanding of the presence of Christ in the sacraments of the church, James DeCoven is your man because as a professor and as a leading figure at Neshota House Seminary in the 19th century and later as a bishop, he became one of the most ardent advocates for a return to an emphasis on rituals and high church liturgy within the Episcopal Church, much to the chagrin of many of his contemporaries. It is James DeCoven, though, who not because of his high church inclinations, but because of the way in which he helped to proclaim them and helped to work with those who disagreed with him, that he is on our calendar of saints today because of a man who, despite his own particular proclivities for worship, very much sought to work with people to help them understand the mysteries of what it is we do in worshiping Christ when we gather together to celebrate our liturgy. Our scripture that goes with his feast day today comes out of Exodus chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. Then God said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Hold on to that because that piece of scripture is very instrumental in understanding James Coven's passion for the ritualism of the Episcopal Church. Just so you know a little of his details, he was born in Middletown, Connecticut in 1831, ordained as a priest when he was at the age of 24, and almost immediately upon being ordained, he was appointed as a professor at the newly founded Neshota House under Bishop Kemper, who was the one who founded it, but James DeCoven had a huge hand in shaping Neshota House, as you're about to hear. He also administered a prep school and worked at the Church of St. John Chrysostom in nearby Deerfield, Wisconsin. Neshota House, a seminary that still exists to this day. In fact, here at St. Stephen's, we have a parishioner whose son is about to graduate from Neshota House Seminary, has been affiliated with what was known as the Oxford Movement, a movement that originated, as you might expect, in Oxford in the early 19th century, but began about this time of James DeCoven to come into the United States, a movement which emphasized the practice of rituals and the importance of ceremonies in the Episcopal Church. Just a very sidebar brief history of the Anglican Church. Anglicanism, while founded during the Protestant Reformation, and at least in its initial identity, was very Protestant in nature, has fluctuated between an emphasis on high and low church, which, which of course, even during the times in which it would had a greater emphasis one way or the other, still had much practice on gradient levels in between what we call low church, which is a church where essentially the sermon is the focus of the service, 
Uh, the liturgy or the sacraments are not very well emphasized, and it is the hearing of God's word, which is the most important thing, to high church rituals, which tend to focus a lot on things we call smells and bells, lots of chanting, lots of lifting up with the senses to come into the mystery and awe of God's presence. Sometimes can be a little overly done in some people's opinion, but a very wide spectrum of practice of uh, worship practices within our church. The Oxford movement was a time in which there were a number of priests and bishops who believed that the church had lost something by moving away as a whole from these rituals. And so the Shota House was founded as a way for the American Episcopal Church to have a place in which it trained up priests who came out focusing on the sacramental life of the church. James DeCoven was one of these people. He became warden of the church college at Racine, Wisconsin, as he was still teaching at Neshota House, where that became a place where he gained a platform for speaking on behalf of the Oxford Movement. During the general conventions of the early 1870s, 1871 and 74 in particular, the controversy of what was known as ritualism, this idea of overemphasis, this is by the detractors, of course, of it, of overemphasis of ritual within the ceremonies of worship, became a big controversy within the church. De Coven became one of the great spokesmen for spokespeople for the quote ritualist party, and at the 1871 convention, he asserted, and I'm reading directly from one of his biographies here, the use of candles on the altar, incense, and genuflections, or when you bow in your pew or bow at the rail or bow before the altar, were lawful because they symbolized the real spiritual presence of Christ. It's one of the beautiful things about the Episcopal Church is that we can have different views about what that means, but for De Coven, the actual physical movements that one has in, has in worship helps to remind you or remind us that Christ is actually present. The Old Testament passage that you heard, which a lot of people in the church today denigrate as old, old rituals that don't mean anything, But if you pay careful attention and listen to it again, it is a way in which God's people were called to prepare as they were at the foot of Mount Sinai to hear the word of God and more importantly to know that God was indeed present. Obviously, you'd say fire and smoke coming from the mountain might have done it. But for the people, when they traveled away from Mount Sinai, they didn't have that very overt presence of God with them hearing of the word and the ways in which they prepared to hear it by sacrifice, understanding the significance of blood, standing the rituals that were part of how the body was oriented in order to pay attention were things that have been and have still are part of what we call high church worship expressions today, particularly on understanding that the sacrament of the bread and wine stands for something more than we're just gathering together for a meal. It stands for here indeed is the presence of Christ and the worship that we have in Holy Eucharist to prepare ourselves for that gets us ready to actually receive and take in that presence into our bodies. In the General Convention of 1874, I'll close with this because this is one of my favorite quotes and it's what, when I kind of sit in the middle between high church and low church, every time I hear this quote, I tend to gravitate a little bit more toward the high church position, at least for a bit. DeCoven expressed the convictions that underlay his belief of what we call his churchmanship. He said, quote, You may take away from us, if you will, every external ceremony, You may take away altars and super altars, lights and incense and vestments, and we will submit to you. But gentlemen, to adore Christ's person and his sacrament, that is the inalienable privilege of every Christian and Catholic heart. How we do it, the way we do it, the ceremonies with which we do it are utterly, utterly indifferent. The thing itself is what we plead for. Despite those who disagreed with him, many people came to support De Coven because of that last statement. It is the thing of Christ's presence that we plead for, and we want to give people the opportunity to know and perceive Christ's presence in whatever way the church needs to do it. 
in order to make it known to people. So I could say a lot more, and I've said more than I need to today about James DeCoven. Read more about him and read more. And if you have questions, please come to me if you would like to understand more about what the differences are between high church ritual, low church practices, and what everything in between comes to be and how that helps to lift us up into the presence of God, whichever way it is that we choose to worship. Thank you for joining me and giving me this extra time with you today. Tomorrow, our saint of the day is Gregory the Illuminator, and I look forward to seeing you with us tomorrow. Take care.